Hi guys, I hope you survived the 104 degree weather today. Uh, chapter 22 is titled Egg Salad Fingers and One Heavy Load. There are three major things that Charlie hasn't figured out about me yet. Number one, I hate tomatoes on egg salad sandwiches that he orders from Diesel's Deli. I ha always have to pick them off with my fingers. Number two, Mama promised me a kitten for my 11th birthday. I was going to name her Happy. And number three, and this one's quite embarrassing, I have never learned to ride a bike. Number three is the exact reason I am hoofing it to Mrs. Dickerson's house. The same day that Debbie took off from the hospital to drive her and Tobin to the nursing home where Tobin's grandma lives down in Reading. It's a hot day after the rain and it's humid too which makes my curls even frizzier than normal. Just as I'm wishing I had braided my hair in one long braid with the orange and green yarn ribbon. I hear someone calling out behind me. Hey San Fran! I turn around to see Buzz Cut on his blue bike, pedaling up behind me. I hold my chin high and just keep walking like I couldn't care less. Hey, San Fran, he calls again, pulling in front of me and whipping his bike in a circle. This wouldn't be a big deal on any other day. Like on a day it didn't pour rain the night before, but it did. So it is, and in a matter of a millisecond, I am covered in a fine mist of mud sprayed up from his back tire. Oh, are you stupid or something? I shouted at him. Look what you just did. Where are you going? I put my hands on my hip. Didn't you even hear what I just said? Yeah, I heard you. Where are you going? He asked again riding in slow circles around me as I walk. As if it was any of your business, maybe I'd tell you, but it's not, so I won't. I say trying to brush off the mud, which only makes the mud smear. I forgot your name, he says. Good, I say walking past him. Keep it that way. He pulls up next to me again, pedaling slow to keep pace with my steps. Fruit punch, I ignore him. Soda pop, I ignore that one too. Strawberry quick, I can tell by his smile. I can tell by the smile on your face that you think that you are funny, but you are wrong about that too, I inform him. Lemonade, he calls out then. Right, I'm right, I know I'm right. Congratulations. I think I would have gone with strawberry quick, you know, because of the color of your hair and everything. I glare at him and he laughs. So where are you going and why don't you ride your new bike? Like I said before, it is none of your business. Why are you hanging out with Tobin Sky? I don't say one word. There's something wrong with that kid, you know. I mean, what's with the hat anyway? The kid never takes it off. Well, we think there's something wrong with you. I stop and I put my hands on my hip, hips. It's you, right? You're the one making the phone calls. He laughs again. I don't see what's so funny. Keeps us busy in the summer. Try rug hooking or something, I say. He just laughs harder. <sighs> We're playing kick the can at Nick French's house. After lunch, he says, pedaling in circles around me again. So, so, you can come if you want to. Why would I want to do that? You're going to be in Miss Santa Maria's class, right? It's great. That's Jay Mayan's mom. You'll meet him if you come today. She makes cupcakes for the class if it's your birthday. And she gives the least amount of homework. I shrug. Well, you can meet some people before school starts. If you want, there's going to be a bunch of us playing. I think about it. I don't know, I say. 
French lives in a blue house, third one down from the library in town. 1808, about one o'clock. Maybe I'll see you there. I don't say anything as I watch him pedal off, spraying mud like a sprinkler with his back wheel. At Mrs. Dickerson's, we eat tiny little egg salad sandwiches that she calls finger sandwiches. Even though they don't look much like fingers, we sip chamomile tea with honey from china cups on her front porch. Will you please tell me more about Mama when she was little, I ask her. Oh, honey, <clears throat> I have a million stories. I want to know all of them, I tell her, sipping from my tea. Well, let's see. Did I tell you about the time your mom was the lead in the Easter production at school? The lead in the play, I ask. No. Oh, it was adorable. What was the name of that play? She rubs her temples to help her find the right memory. Oh, I just can't recall. But it was an Easter play, and she wore a paper bonnet on her head. I giggle. A paper bonnet? Well, she couldn't remember her lines halfway through, but she made up an entirely new story. All the other kids just went with it, and the whole second half was just improvised. It started off as a play about an Easter bonnet and ended up being a story about saving the animals in the forest. Oh, she was always about the animals. Still is, I tell her. You know, Mama is a vet in the city. Yes, honey, I do. How do you know? Oh, well, Charlie keeps close tabs on her, even after she left for good. Charlie would take trips to the city and check up on her and make sure that she was okay. Then, of course, when you came along, the trips were even more frequent. He did that? I don't ever remember meeting him. You didn't. She looks off into the woods across the street. Elizabeth just couldn't get past, and he was devastated by that. He wanted so desperately to make amends. Well, maybe he just didn't try hard enough. Oh, he did, honey. Believe me. Mama would have forgiven him if he'd have just tried. Oh, if he'd have just really tried, she would have. Mama was just like that. Oh, my sweet lemonade. Oh, they were just both so broken, broken to their cores. Their hearts shattered in so many pieces after Rebecca died. They just didn't know how to fix it. And instead of holding on to each other and through their grief with love and gratitude, their sadness just came out in anger, and their anger just tore them apart. I don't know what to say about that, so I just don't say anything. We sit for a spell, and we sip, and we munch on our egg salad fingers. I know how hard it's been for you, Miss Dickerson says quietly, smiling a crooked pink lipstick smile at me. Life makes us stronger. The most important thing to remember is to have gratitude for those we love and those who love us. <clears throat> Even if it's not for the amount of time we expected or wished for, if you don't, you can be washed away by your sadness. You know what it feels like sometimes, I ask? Kind of like I have to carry something that's way too heavy and I can't find any place to set it down and it makes my whole body ache. She nods slowly with her eyes closed. You may never find that place to put it down, but I promise you that the load will become lighter, and one day you may even forget that it's with you any longer, but it will be with you. Elizabeth will always be a part of you, making you stronger, braver, and more loving because of what you've carried. Your task now, <clears throat> she takes a long drink of her tea. Your task is to learn to accept your new life without forgetting the gifts from your past. These are the gifts of your new life, Lemonade. She holds out her arms. Willow Creek, Charlie, Tobin, trust it, embrace it, be thankful for it. I think hard about her words. I am thankful for Mama, I say, and about the other things, too. 
Like what? she asks. You for one, I say. And your cookies for another. Miss Dickerson laughs until she wipes at the teardrops squeezing out of the edges of her eyes. Black smudges appear on her white cloth napkin in her hand. Oh, lemonade, you are so much like her. Do you know that? I wipe at my very own tears. I used to know what I'd tell her, but I think I just might have forgotten. That's the end of chapter 22. Hope y'all have a wonderful evening. God bless y'all, and I certainly do miss you.